Welcome to this another video lecture on the ENT. I am Dr. Jawad and this time we will be covering septal hematoma. So septal hematoma is actually the collection of blood in between the septum and the mucoperichondrial or mucoperiosteal flap. Now you do know the septum, we have discussed it in the previous video in the separate anatomy of the nasal septum that the nasal septum consists of this uh, a septum that is that is just dividing the nasal cavity which is the pyramid shaped cavity into left and right halves then we have said that the nasal septum consists of the columnar septum the membranous septum and then there is septum proper the septum proper is it is called a septum proper because it is uh, uh, so that it has the mucosal membrane whereas the columnar portion uh, columnar septum as well as the membranous septum that is bounded by the skin that it uh, this portion is so actually covered by the skin whereas the septum proper is covered by the mucous membrane now this mucous membrane uh, over the septum septal cartilage so when it has the septal cartilage in the mucous membrane so what uh, there is the cartilage has its external membrane that is called as perichondrium and when the mucous membrane is overlying over it so <coughs> that is called as mucoperichondrial uh, flap or mucoperichondrial membrane and similarly when there uh, the bones have the per periosteum so when the mucous membrane is overlying it so that is called as periosteal membrane or periosteal flap so when there is a collection in between the septal cartilage and this the covering that it has so when there is uh, bleeding and uh, this bleeding accumulates in between the nasal septum and this overlying covering so what happens the septal hematoma develops now let's talk about its etiology so mainly the main main and the foremost cause of it is the trauma so that's why you will see the the septal hematoma in the setting of the young children or the sportsmen because these people uh, the young children or the sportsmen so uh, because they are more prone to the trauma and uh, they are more prone to the development of the septal hematoma moreover some people are just aggressive in the nose picking so they may also develop the nasal septal hematoma and one thing you have to remember that if there are some fracture that nasal fracture occurs in the septum so that may also lead to the bleeding and if the uh, uh, the membrane the mucus uh, the perichondrial or the periosteal membrane and along with the mucous membrane if that does not rupture so what happens that the bleeding that uh, so those bleeding they accumulate within uh, in between the septum as well as in between the septum and the uh, membranes so as a result what happened the septal hematoma developed however if the mucous membrane is also ruptured so what will happen that you will get bleeding from the inside of the nose and the bleeding from the inside of the nose is called as epistaxis so in case of nasal fractures or the trauma if the mucous membrane is ruptured then you will have epistaxis but if the mucous membrane is intact so what what will develop nasal hematoma and nasal septal hematoma will develop there are some iatrogenic causes of course during SMR or sub septoplasty or some of these nasal septal uh, operations so what you uh, you can get the bleeding uh, that accumulates in the nasal septum moreover some spontaneous bleeding can also occur in some bleeding disorders say for example you have hemophilia or other bleeding disorders so in those bleeding disorders the blood is unable to clot and as a result the spontaneous bleeding may occur similarly the same is the case with the anticoagulants if somebody is taking anticoagulants and he is uh, so he will not able to clot the blood so what happens that the spontaneous bleeding occurs and the uh, nasal septum that is one of the uh, that is the region that is most vascularized region so my bleeding develop over there and as a result since the mucous membrane is intact so nasal septal hematoma may develop so the take-home message is the cause main cause that is trauma maybe some nasal fractures iatrogenic causes some bleeding disorders or anticoagulant uh, use chronic anticoagulant use so that those are your uh, causes now let's talk about the clinical features that how will the patient present so the clinical features so first of all you have to remember the cause that the most of these patients will will be young or they will be sportsmen however you will see the smooth round swelling in the septum you will see a smooth rounded swelling in the septum and if you on examination if you examine the swelling so they will be flatulent they will be soft and smooth so these swellings uh, can be seen inside the nasal uh, inside the nasal cavity or the nasal septum 
Moreover, if the cartilage is ruptured, if the uh, cartilage that is in between in the septum, so that if that is ruptured, so what will happen that the bleeding will uh, go over the other side as well, and as a result, it will lead to the bilateral swelling. Now, the bilateral swelling, that's the bilateral swelling uh, or hematoma, it is very dangerous why because we know that the main uh, main nutritional supply of the perichondrium is of the um, sorry of the cartilage is to the perichondrium as the um, as the cartilage does not have the blood supply of its own so it mainly get through the diffusion through the perichondrium so now if you uh, if the perichondrium is moved away by this blood this blood clot that is present over here or this hematoma so what will happen that the nutritional supply of the perichondrium or the carry of the cartilage sorry so the nutritional supply of the cartilage will be compromised and once that is compromised what will happen that the necrosis will be develop and if once necrosis develop then you know that uh, the cartilage the septal cartilage provide the support to the dorsal of the nose so the dorsum of the nose will settle down and that will lead to the saddle nose deformity as you will see in the complications so you can see this is the complication that once the cartilage is necrosed so you will have this is the normal nose and here you can see that the dorsal of the nose will settle down and as a result this saddle nose deformity will occur now so we have talked about that then bilateral nasal obstruction of course it is a mass so it will obstruct the ear inflow and mainly if it is uh, in the area of the nasal valve which we have discussed in the anatomy that is the uh, region over the vestibule so that is the most uh, least cross-sectional area in this uh, respiratory tract so what will happen in that the inflow of air is mainly controlled by this region so you can get uh, bilateral nasal obstruction moreover frontal headaches may be associated with it so these are the clinical features you have a swelling the swelling may obstruct the airflow the swelling may cause the necrosis of the cartilage and um, saddle nose deformity now let's talk about the treatment since it is a hematoma it is a normal collection of the blood so it may be drained now drain if it is a small hematoma it may be drained by using small um, large board needle so that's called aspiration drain, uh, drainage however if it is a uh, larger than what you have to, to, to do you have to do the incision drainage and for that you have to give an incision that is parallel to this uh, nostril so uh, our anterior posterior Mm, an anterior posterior incision is given then pressure is applied to remove the whole of the hematoma and once that hematoma is re removed you have to do this uh, apply suction as well so all that and you have to take care of that the uh, bleeding don't go posteriorly and uh, does not cause aspiration so you have to carefully about that yes you have to do the in give the incision then you have to drain all of the hematoma or the all the blood that is collected in it then after that you have to do the nasal packing and the nasal packing is done in order to pressure this nasal septum so that the blood does not accumulate again and a recurrence of the nasal uh, septal hematoma does not occur moreover the nasal uh, packing should be um, uh, should be applied along with the uh, topical anti stuff Mm, medication so that because uh, the staff love to cause infection and septal abscesses which we will cover in next video so you have to give topical uh, you have to apply topical anti-staff um, antibiotic to this nasal packing and then you have to pressure and pack this nasal septum moreover systemic antibiotics are also given to prevent the infection and the patient has to do the follow-up within 72 hours so that to see that whether recurrence of the nasal uh, septal hematoma has occurred or not so that was the treatment surgery yes, so that was the treatment you have to aspirate the hematoma and then apply pressure through the nasal packing to prevent it recurrence so now let's talk about its complications so what are the complications that may develop so if um, it is large if the septal hematoma is large and bilateral so what will it will have what it will do that there may be septal cartilage necrosis i have told you when it, once it is large and bilateral so the diffusion of the nutrition won't take place because the perichondrium is moved by this uh, septal hematoma away so as a result the cartilage la uh, l uh, cartilage will lose its blood supply or uh, or cartilage will lose its nutritional uh, its nutrition as uh, as a result what will happen that 
necrosis will occur and this necrosis will lead to the cerebral nose deformity because this cartilage mainly provide the support to the dorsum of the nose now if it is small and unilateral if the hematoma is small and unilateral it usually get absorbed and once it is absorbed what will happen that the granulation will occur that will lead to the fibrosis and as a result you will get a thickened septum and that's it thickened septum of course it will cause the nasal obstruction so that is one of its complication and the next thing is that the uh, any hematoma so the uh, the staff and all those infections they love to infect those septal hematomas and once they infect it they form abscesses and that abscesses may then lead to the necrosis and again you can get the saddle nose deformity so the thing to remember is that uh, the necrosis the saddle nose deformity and it may lead to the thickened septum or it may form nasal abscesses thank you that would be all for now subscribe to my channel for further upcoming videos and let me know any shortcoming in the comment section below thank you